You're on mute. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a lot better when I'm on mute. You guys will really like me better. Um, I uh, I am kind of edgy, and if I slip and say a bad word, y'all please pray for me. I'll 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 get better. You know. Um, I first of all I've got to say. Well, first of all, I've got to say my name is Jim, and I'm a sexaholic. Um, I have not found it necessary to take a drink or a drug or act out sexually with outside of my marriage or with myself since July 11th, 2006. And that's a, that's a big deal for me. I am hugely honored to follow people like Harvey and Bill and Steve. Uh, I've known all three of them pretty much my whole history of sobriety. Um, they're, they're all hugely important to me. Steve, is, in fact, is my sponsor. And so anything you don't like about what I said, call him. His number's right, right up there. Um, Harv, I mean, and Bill, and Bill, Bill is also in my, my sponsorship lineage. And, um, and then Harvey is, Harvey has been, Harvey, Har, everybody knows Harvey. Harvey's Harvey. And, uh, and it's, it's a huge honor for me to be able to follow these guys. Um, what I do want to tell you, though, is, is I, this is a weird way of bragging. I'm the only one of the four of us that has chronically relapsed. So there you go. I mean, I've been there and done that. Uh, the other guys can just talk about it. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I, I, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about a little bit about my story of relapse and then and then just, you know, pick and choose a few topics, a few, a few thoughts. And actually a lot of, a lot of note, I've been taking notes. I took notes on Harvey and Bill and Steve and, and I might, uh, you know, say something that, that they already said it just, just with the gym, gym curve on it. So, um, I started my story of relapse in, in 1996. Um, I, uh, I, I was a practicing physician, and, and nobody else has told you their, their, uh, their professions, but, but it's just so intertwined with me and my story and my relapse that I have to, I have to let you know that, that, that I practiced medicine um, for, for 25 years before I started getting in trouble. with uh, I, I, was, I was already sober from alcohol and drugs for a few years, but I started getting in trouble with uh, boundary violations. And, uh, and I was identified, um, in 1999 and went to my first, my first treatment center. Now for me, I go to treatment when the tough gets going, I go to treatment. I mean, I just got to get away. I, I honor every, each and every one of you people that have, have, uh, have come to the program off the street, gone to meetings, gotten a sponsor, worked steps, and 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 stayed sober and had any meaningful sobriety. I mean that that's amazing, and that's and that is how it works. It just for me, I had to get away. I mean, I have to go where my focus is on on recovery, and I don't have any. You know, I can't go out and I can't make phone calls and I can't do this. I can't. You know, they take away a lot of things from me when I entered the treatment center. So my first treatment center was in 1999. And, um, and you know, part of my story and why I relapse is because one, untreated sexaholism. Two, no, not reached an adequate bottom. I hadn't had a significant amount of consequences and I'm a huge rationalizer about my consequences. Because I have this thing that tells me everybody does that. That's okay. You know, I'm not any different from so-and-so. He does that all the time. You know, this and that and that. You know, it's just, you know, and I have minimized and rationalized uh, my behavior so much as to be normal that, that, it, that it's, it really kept me, kept me struggling, struggling. By the way, aside. Struggle is the opposite of surrender. If you ever find yourself struggling and use that word, the answer is you're not surrendered, period. 
Okay. Um, I, uh, so I first went to my treatment center, my first treatment center, actually it was two thousand February of 2000. And I, and I stayed there for about four weeks and, you know, I, I, I had some consequences and I was in trouble and, but, um, uh, people were kind of looking over my shoulder and, um, you know, being a recovering physician in the state of Tennessee, there was a, there was a, a, a doctor over the impaired professional program named uh, David Dodd. And he was a sweet guy and he knew all about alcohol and drug treatment and didn't know too much about sex addiction treatment. But, but I told on myself because I was so felt so guilty because I had a boundary violation with a, with a female in my office. And I went and told on myself and he said, and he knew that I was in this ongoing self-run men's group that there were a couple of recovering alcoholics in it. And he said, well, that's okay. Just stop the behavior and take it to your group. <laughs> I mean, that's laughable. I hope that maybe some of you can understand if I could stop the behavior, bam, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be talking to you right now. I would have stopped that behavior and lived happily ever after. But but I couldn't stop the behavior. So what it did is set me up to be a liar. You know, I told on myself, he said, stop the behavior. I can't, but I can't, you know, I'm not going any, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell him anymore. I did, I did what I was supposed to do. Um, and it, so uh, after, uh, after my treatment center in 2000, I kind of, kind of hid low and stayed low, but, but I was still, you know, I was still uh, uh, having boundary violations and and um, and and masturbating and you know, but but mainly mainly uh, seeking other fe seeking females outside my marriage. Uh, that was that was kind of I, I guess it was my drug of choice. And low and, and what what you know, I was sober from alcohol and drugs for nineteen years, but the shame over. Me acting out, boundary violations, do it, picking on uh, being a predator. I'm a predator. I am a predator. There is no victim here. I am a predator. And when I would pre, I would predate, whatever the word is, when I would swoop down on these unsuspecting people, I felt so bad about it that um, I ended up relapsing on on uh, on drugs. And um, and then shortly after that, I changed my, my drug of choice, changed from narcotics to stimulants. And I was shooting, I do an IV stimulants. And, you know, if any of you have any history or know anything about, about drug abuse, I mean, stimulants and sex addiction, just, I mean, that just rocks it, rocking, you know, shoots me way up there. I mean, it, things went, things went very crazy, very fast. Uh, went to it, went, got, got sent down to, uh, to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, to the to the gentle path um, in 2005. Uh, Patrick Carnes was still there, or it was he was it was his he was using his name. If you if you ever went to treatment under Patrick Carnes, at least back in those days, so you paid about like thirty five thousand dollars and you got fifteen minutes with Patrick Carnes, and so that's what I got is I got I got one session with Patrick Carnes and spent a lot of money and stayed. Um, stayed for several months in, in, in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And, um, and, and by this time, the licensure board had, uh, had told me that I needed to surrender my license. And it was just, I couldn't do that. It was just the worst thing. I, you know, I, um, um, it was, who am I if I don't have a medical license? I mean, I have worked my whole life to do this and now they're, they're telling me to, to quit. And, um, it took me it took me another year to do that. But anyway, um, so I, so I surrendered my license and I went back for a reevaluation at this time in a place in Texas named Sante, uh, right, right north of Dallas, Denton, Texas. And, um, and so I went there for a three day evaluation. And and I, I mean, you know, I guess if, I, if you want to hear me rationalize, I was doing better after that year, but I wasn't sober. Um, and it took a polygraph to for them to figure out how full of crap I was and say, well, we're not only going to advocate you get your license back, but you need to stay here for treatment. Well, 
So that was that was uh that was my sobriety day, 71106. I stayed there for five months. Five months in treatment. My last, I hope it's my last treatment. Um but it took every it took every day of that. It did, I mean, it just for me. I'm 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 really a sick sexaholic. And um and it took a lot of a lot of therapy and a lot of everything. Um I got back, met met my my sponsor, who's still my sponsor, Steve, and um, and really got really got into the program at that point. Uh, I was sponsored well. One of the things we've talked a whole lot about sponsorship, and I'll probably bring it up again some more. Um, um, I was sponsored strongly, and I, you know, I. I, I contacted my sponsor a lot and he was he was available and I just I really wouldn't do much early on without running it by him. I just, you know, my way wasn't working and I could see something in him and he had a few years at that point. And um and he's a smart guy. And sometimes I think that I'm smart, but but if you're if you're smarter than your sponsor, maybe you need to change. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> this guy, Steve, is smart, and he called me on my crap, and I couldn't. You know, it was just it's just exactly who I needed and what I needed in a sponsor. Um, um, and sponsorship is is I'm, I'll I'll kind of jump ahead a little bit. Sponsorship is one of the huge things that parts of my program now that the things that keep me sober is I have a lot of sponsors as does Bill that spoke earlier, as does Steve that spoke earlier, and as does Harvey that spoke earlier. Um, and, and getting phone calls and working steps with them. Um, and, and another thing about sponsorship for me is my definition of a sponsor is somebody is a guide through the steps. And that's the, that's the first thing I'm going to do with a sponsee is be their guide through the steps. Now, if the relationship develops into a friendly thing, well, that's just wonderful. But if it doesn't, at least I'm going to guide them through the steps. And I have been guided through the steps. You know what it says? And we've, we've talked about the page 58 a lot on how it works. What it says at first, rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. I like to think, Steve may differ some, but I like to think that I have thoroughly followed his path. And, and he used to, he used to mess with me when, when I'd come over to his house and we'd be working on seven. He said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I what do you mean I'm, what am I doing here? And he said, you are thoroughly following my path. And I believe that Steve never told me anything that he hadn't been told by his sponsor. And, and I hope to, 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 that I carry that on with the guys that I sponsor, you know, I carry them through the steps the same way I was taken through the steps because it's worked for me. And, and that's, and that all I've really got to share is my experience. And um, so, so sponsorship is huge. It's huge. Um, I was, I gave this, I gave this talk. I'm looking at some notes and, and the, and the notes were from January of 2017. I gave this talk in Jerusalem Uh and it, I was, it was such a blessing to be able to go to Jerusalem and, and to an international convention. And, um, and there's, there's a guy, maybe you know him, he's from Oklahoma, and they call him the String Man. He's Dave T. is his name. And, and Dave told me something right before I walked in to give this talk about, about uh, people being ready to, to get sober. And he, and he, and he, he's, he, like, he likened it like this. Um, uh, it's, it's like it's like fruit. Let's see, where is it? Anyway, anyway, some people show up into SA like a really ripened piece of fruit. You know, they're red and luscious and hanging low and about ready to drop. And those people do well quickly. They and they they're not they don't tend to be chronic relapsers. But some of us, like me, show up green. I had people on my back. You know, I went to treatment and they said, you got to go to meetings. So I had all, all these external forces forcing me to go to meetings and, 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 and asking me to prove, you know, to, to do things to prove that I was sober, but I wasn't ready to get sober. 
So I was really green. And it took me from 1996 until 2006, I hope, to, uh, to ripen and to be ready to be sponsored and be, to, to be ready to work, uh, work this, do this deal. Um, thanks to God, strong sponsorship, service, and surrender, I've been able to make it, make it, make it up until this day. And, and, and I want to talk about the, these three S's that were pointed out to me, or I made them up or somewhere I got this, you know, I don't know. I, they, they tell me that, that, that if I have something neat to say that I have to give credit for it for three times. And after that, then it can, it's okay if I tell them it's mine. And so, so this one might be mine. I don't know. Uh, three S's steps. I mean, um, the, if I jump all the way to the 12th step, it says, and this is why I'm here. Having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps. Um, and so I think, you know, depending on the day, I've had a, a psychic change or a spiritual awakening, but it is as the result of these steps. Um, and so the steps are huge. And then service, I've got, I, I don't believe anybody's talked much about service yet. My sponsor, immediately we call it voluntold voluntold me to i had to do this i had to you know we we had a new inner group in in town and i and there's only four of us at the meeting and 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 steve said okay you're going to be the chairman you're going to be the vice chairman you're going to be the secretary one two three and so and so i was told to do stuff like that and i and i uh and i followed through you know i took that seriously I, I knew that 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 my sponsor was really heavily involved in in service and and um, you know I didn't let me tell you this I didn't necessarily believe everything he told me but I believed in his belief he believed it strongly and at least I believed that he I believed in what he believed uh, that he believed it. I believed in his belief more than I believed it might be true. And that, and that was good enough for me uh, early on to realize that, that all this service stuff that he told me was for real. And I've been involved in service at every different level. And I'm still, I'm still active in my local group and I'm active in regional and, and, uh, and international um, service. And, um, you know, it just, it's just another thing that keeps me sober. If I'm working on a committee, as much as I hate working on committees, I never have gotten over that. You know, I was a solo practitioner and it was a buck stopped here kind of guy. But now I've got to work through a committee and I've got to we've got to get along and we've got to come up with a consensus and we've got to we've got to go by Robert's rules. And and I'm just that's that's just not that's just not as it's not easy for me to do that. But anyway, that's you know, sobriety is not easy. Uh, service work's not easy. But for me, it's necessary. And I believe from what I can read about service, it's a it's a it's a legacy. Um, and then the third S, you know, I've got steps, service and then surrender. I, uh, and surrender is a real hard term. Um, maybe everybody here has got a grasp on what surrender is to them. Um, it's, it's, it's the third step. It's me turning my will and my life over the care of God as I understand him. It's me, it's me doing what my sponsor says, regardless of what I, th I think is right. It's me going to how many ever meetings because somebody told me to go to a meeting. It's me um, um, answering a phone call when I'm, when I'm right in the middle of watching Yellowstone. It's me, you know, all that to me is surrender. I, you know, it's just, it's just important. Um, it's critical. It's critical. It's critical. Um, so how am I doing? I'm talking fast. I want to, I want to go over a few things few, from a few notes that I made this morning. Um, you know, I think it's my opinion that people that that, are, that that call themselves chronic relapsers, they just never, they're undertreated. First of all, they're undertreated sexaholics, and maybe they have never gotten sober yet. And maybe they just, they, they, uh, 
they keep going out because because they just they, they they don't know they don't know what they need to know or they don't they haven't experienced what they need to experience um bill talked about the the first step and and i for me i mean if i have somebody that i'm working with and they relapse the first thing i want to do is go back and talk to them about powerlessness i believe and this is just jim that if I re, that if I relapse, that my disease I don't know where my disease is going to take me. I mean, jails, institutions, and death. Just like just like we hear, um, I have definitely broken the law, and I could do it again and go to jail. I could go back to another institution, or I could die. I mean, and and dying is is something that, that I can easily see. You know, I can easily see me dying because of X Y Z, and some. Um, Bill, I believe, gave a great example of uh, somebody, you know, a guy that was, thought he was fixing to get caught for doing something and he jumped off the building. Um, I can I can see that because, you know, uh, it's just it, it's it's just huge. Um, and so so my point is that if you or me or anyone on this call decides to relapse, there's one of two reasons. It's one is because they think they have power over this. Yeah, I can go and do this today and it'll feel real good. And yeah, and I'm going to feel bad about it. But then I can go back to my meeting and I can get it. I can reset my date and get a chip and start all over again. And everybody will hug me or something. You know, that's that's a, that, that shows I have power over it. I know what I can do and what will happen. I have power over that addiction. Um, or if, if, it, if it's not powerlessness, I'm suicidal. Maybe I'm suicidal. If I don't care what happens, I'm going to go do that. And I don't care if I die. That's okay. That's cool with me. So I'm either powerless or I'm suicidal. I'm not powerless. I'm sorry. I'm either not powerless if I choose to do that or I'm suicidal. And that's, and that's, that's, what, that's what I believe. Um, uh, you know, Another, we've talked also about a, another thing on page 58 in the big book that I wanted to uh, mention is right before the steps, you know, we say if the, the, the five paragraphs I, I think are great, uh, and, and the, this is maybe the last paragraph before the steps, if you have decided you want what we have, if, if and are willing to go to any length to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. You know, maybe, maybe that's, that says that somebody walks in the front door and we don't, we don't grab them at the front door and have them start working steps. Maybe they're not ready. Maybe that's part of the relapse thing. I don't know, but it's, 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 it's always been, you know, I, I try when somebody asks me to sponsor them, sometimes I'll, uh, I'll, I'll read that. And of course, everybody, you know, when you, when you're getting a new sponsor, you're, you're going to say anything maybe. And, uh, so, so, so my guys, I'll, I'll read that to them. I say, okay, are you ready? Are you willing to go to any length to get this? And they say, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm going to remind you of this day. It's three o'clock and it's on Monday, the 21st. Let's write this down because I may be bringing this back up to you in the future when you, when you're balking it doing the next right thing. Um, another uh, chronic relapse. Now, I'm, I'm, I hope everybody here that, that considers themselves having, having struggling with relapse um, has a sponsor. And anything I say, anything I say, if your sponsor disagrees with you, he's right and I'm wrong. I mean, your sponsor, I really think that it's, that it's a spiritually thing. I think God looks over sponsorship. I believe, I believe it's a special relationship and, and by God. Um, but if Harvey just has taught me this, or I've heard him say it recently, when he's working with somebody that's relapsing chronically, or he'll give this advice. You know, I he thinks, and I think, and I cannot disagree 
that maybe the problem is, is we need to get you to the fourth step and the fifth step real fast. You know, maybe we really need to get on down there. So, so here's, here's a piece of paper. Here, here's your first step. Here's a piece of paper. I want you to write on 10, 10 ways you're powerless on one side and 10 ways you're unmanageable on the other side and give it back to me tomorrow. And we're going to go over it. Bam. You're through with the first step. Here's the second step. You go to page 47 in the big book and it says, it says, um, if you believe or are even willing to believe there is a power greater than you, then you are ready to move on. You're ready to do something, you know, bam, that's the second step. It doesn't have to be any, I mean, you know, there's a whole lot more that can be done about the first and second steps. Don't get me wrong, but, but in certain cases, you can get somebody through the first step and the second step really fast. And then you can, you can work with them pretty quick about the third step and their, and their selfishness and self-centeredness, and then get them to write in an inventory. Um, you know, and actually, if you've ever thought about it, the first three steps, I mean, I can be sitting on my couch. I can be sitting right here and y'all can just look at me and I can take the first three steps and you, and you never know it. I mean, I can do it right here. You know, I can admit, I can come to believe and I can make a decision right here in front of your eyes. But the first thing if to, to prove that I have made a decision, the first action step is to start writing that fourth step. And so, you know, that's, that's when the, that's when the pencil meets the paper. And, um, and that's, that's the first really, really action step in my opinion. And so, so that's, that's just another thing. Here I am 27 minutes, Jason, and I've got about 35 more minutes worth of talking. So, I know that's time for me to shut up. I really appreciate being here. Uh, maybe I've piqued some interest. Um, and I see that Bill, and I don't know about Steve, but I see Bill is still here. So if y'all ask me any real hard questions, I'm gonna get Bill to help me out. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Jim. That was fantastic. And lots of good notes from that. Um, yeah, um, yeah, it's um I just think it's awesome that you've come and shared your time with us today. Um so we're gonna um throw over to the questions. Um the first person I didn't see, um so if you got a resentment, um I think I go in the first column. Jeremy, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, um uh, Jim, thanks for your service. Thanks to everybody who's uh, participated today. Um you talked about how you how some people come in green and some people are red, uh, and you're one of those that started green. Um, if you could please expound on how you went from from green to red, um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, and you know I sure can tell you that, and it's not a it's not a sweet it's not a sweet answer. I kept coming back, and I kept going back out there and reaching other bottoms. You know, I kept doing the next wrong thing uh, and my greenness turned a little bit red. And finally, when I'd had enough and uh, and I got that evaluation from that from those people in Nashville that said they don't in the foreseeable future see me being able to to uh, to get re licensure. I thought, well, Jim, what are you going to be? I mean, you know, what's left? Do you want to and, and what's left for me? What was left for me is is my family and my legacy. For some reason, I've got enough pride and ego that I want some people to, to remember me fondly. And I've got to start, if I'm going to be that person, I've got to start doing that now, regardless of the, any doctor crap that comes in for my name. And that's how I got from green to red. Great. I uh, really appreciate that. If I could ask a follow-up question, um, you know, I've often felt that from hearing other people talking about being ready and all this, that, that I've, I'm not entirely ready. And, and I, I acknowledge that I've stated that to many people. Um, and yet I see, I think that not finding recovery, I, I will eventually hit some bottom that I would rather not hit and trying to find a way to avoid that. And I just don't seem to be able to do that yet. I was just wondering if you have any well, advice. Yeah. I mean, you know, going to meetings and going to meetings and meetings, and meetings, and meetings, and, and listening to the people that come in and have to reset or listening to people to tell the, the stories, you know, that's, I mean, you can, you, you, you know, I sometimes 
rudely or, or gut level honestly when when a friend of mine relapses i'll tell them well thank you for doing that because i didn't so i didn't have to today you know i'm gonna i'm gonna get something from somebody else's relapse hopefully so i don't have to all right thank you very much appreciate it thanks jeremy um feel free to reach out to jim harvey steve or bill um if you need to talk more jeremy and we're glad you're here uh, we have our wonderful friend from uh, Australia. I'm not sure what part of the world he's in at the moment, but Patrick, please give us a question. Glad you're here too, brother. Thanks, Jason, and thanks for your service. Um, I was just getting in the car when I was. I heard you share, uh, Jim, uh, that um, you had multiple sponsors, and then I had to do something, and I. I wanted to ask, do you mean that literally you have many no, sponsors? I, th I think I misspoke. I have multiple sponsees. You know, I have a, I have, I have a long list of sponsees. And, and a, a funny, funny story around that is I heard Harvey say one time, somebody asked him, Harvey, how many people do you sponsor? He said about half of them. <laughs> and, and that's, and that's, and that, so, so I got, I've got a lot that are on my list, but I really sponsor about half of them, I guess. Okay, so multiple you didn't sponsors. say that multiple sponsors. sponsors. Is that is that good to have a couple of sponsors within the program, or is, is that going to muddy the waters? Well, I think that's a special. That would be a special case, and it would be up to your sponsors and you, because I know if I had if I have uh, if I had another sponsor other than other than Steve, you know, when he said something that I thought, well, that's off the wall. Let me go ask so and so. You know, and I would be, I would be, you know, I get it. I'd, I'd mess it up. I would I mess it. it up. Yeah, yeah. That I thought the same, and that's why I asked it because I thought you said, "Oh, the guy's got multiple sponsors, and he seems to be sort of advocating for that." So that's great that you have um, um, explained that. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. That was me. Awesome. Thanks. Um, anyone else got a question? Jace, a chat came directly to me. Um, do you want me to read that out? Uh, yeah, go for it. It's Matthias. Hi, Jim. What do you think about medical treatment to be able to work in the program in the 12 steps according to what you said? There are only two reasons to relapse. Thank you. And that's from Matthias. So... So the question is, what do I think about medical treatment for, for treatment of sexaholism? Is, was that the essence of the question? Medical treatment, medical treatment to be able to work in the program. Well, absolutely. You know, I think sometimes I like to use the word we. I think we're all messed up. That's and in addition to the 12 steps and sponsorship and God and everything else, I still go to a therapist. Um, I have now for six for 17 years. I've been going a little bit longer than I've been sober. And and part of that time I was on a little bit of medicine. Um, I didn't um, I didn't they told me I could take the medicine off pretty quick. But, um, I, I, you know, there's we have there are dual. Some of us are dually diagnosed. And that that means we have addiction and we have another another uh, mental illness, uh, depression or bipolar or whatever. And, and those things have to be taken into consideration um, too. So um, I, don't know, I don't know about, you know, a direct, I did hear one time that Paxil was, would, really would cut down on your libido, but, but the deal is, is that my disease is not just about not acting out. I mean, my, I got this thinking thing, man. It goes on in my brain, and whether I'm whether I'm I'm 72, so I'm not physically able to do what I used to do, and and but that doesn't really matter because I'm still I still think like a sexaholic, and uh, and it can get me in trouble, you know. So um, anyway, I don't know why I went off on that. Thanks. <clears throat> always love your answers, Jim. They're always so honest. Thanks, Jim. Um... I um, actually have a question about, um, it's not to do with chronic relapse, but about early days of SA when you started getting sober. 
can you share about what it was like back then without all the Zoom meetings and what you actually had to do to get sober without mobile phones and things like that? And a bit of the yeah. history, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, I, I can tell you a little bit of history, but sitting right next to me in that orange shirt, you know, he's got 20 more years than I do. He can tell you a little bit more than I can. But but when I, you know, in 2006, 2005, when I, when I was going into treatment a few years before that, you know, it was it was only face to face. And and again, um, I was I had to become willing to go to any length. And my length was a one hour drive to a meeting and I would drive one hour one way. I would drive total two hours to a meeting three or four times a week. Um, and that's, um, you know, it just it just it took what it took. Um, um, and phone calls, we didn't, we didn't actually, we didn't have text messages. I don't believe, I don't believe I was texting. I don't remember for sure. Um, but it took, it took more phone calls. And uh, I mean, text messages are great. Zoom meetings are great. But I, I think, I think when I'm texting somebody, you know, it's easy to be misunderstood. I like to hear the reflection, inflection in somebody's voice when they say what, what's going on with them. You know, whether they're, you know, I can, you can just tell a whole lot more. And, and Zoom, now Zoom's okay because you can see my face and you can hear, the, hear my voice and you can kind of figure out when I'm lying or not, maybe. Uh -huh. that, Bill, anything else? Would you have anything to add? Yeah, happy to hear from Bill too. Getting sober back in the day? Well, uh, again, I think that that I was fortunate that that um, I had a lot of uh, outside support, meaning therapy and so forth, as well as a sponsor who took me through the steps. Um, and again, I just uh, I can't emphasize enough uh, the 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 value of of the tools in the eighteen wheeler uh, to allow me to uh, stop acting out long enough to get some traction in the program. Uh, that was that was invaluable. Uh, like Jim, I too continue to do therapy uh, for other uh, issues uh, in addition to, to recovery from sexaholism. Awesome, thanks, Bill. Um, John L's got a question. Go for it, John. Hi, thanks, um, John L. I, I can't get my video on him, dear. <laughs> Uh, grateful recovering sexaholic member of the Not a Glum Lot group, and you said some things that were really important to me. Um, well, one thing, and one thing you said is, uh, you know, some of us come in, or I forget how you put it, but you know, like I've got a sponsor who said you just need to do step four, you know, and he's been pushing and pushing me, and um, just to back up. A little bit. Um, I'm 23 years uh, since my first meeting, and uh, no sobriety. Still uh, have another relapse again, so I have to admit to the group tomorrow. I certainly know I'm powerless, and you know when you said that maybe I'm. I don't think I'm suicidal, but I don't, it's it's maybe not like a like a. I have a, an immediate death wish. There's like a part of me that's like I'm not sure I even care. I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll say this, um, I was sexually abused by my mom. My father died when I was little and growing up was really traumatic. And, um, I have done a little bit of step four work with my sponsor who's, I love him. He's, 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 he gets, he understands that this is not easy. He's been through similar trauma. Um, and what we've identified so far is my primary, my top four resentments are against me, my mom, my dad, and and my higher power, whatever that higher power is. I don't really know. For many years, I thought I was an atheist, and I really take page 47 of the AA Big Book to heart. You know, trying to figure this out, what this means for myself. You know, what all these spiritual terms mean. Mean it's not easy. So I'm just really pissed off still, you know, some days I have good days and some days not, um, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I just needed, maybe I just need to talk and get that out more. 
not really sure what my question is to you. If anything, it's like, how do you stop getting old? How do you, how do you, for, some people, I had a very, a very, uh, 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 what do you call it? He's a Roman Catholic guy, and, and, and I, I was raised Jewish, and anyway. <laughs> he, I once told him I was pissed off at God, and he, and I think he was really offended at that. And, um, but that's kind of what it is. I'm just, I, I, I walk around most of the time just pissed off, you know, because I can't stop thinking about all that abuse. And then my dad died. You know, it's like this is supposed to be a loving God. That doesn't feel very loving to me. So I'm struggling with that. And I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Thanks, John. Um, so I, have, I just have a couple of observations based on what you said. Um, uh, first of all, I mean, I, you know, when I was talking about doing the, doing the real, the, the steps real fast to, to get to the fourth step, um, I mean, that's in special cases. It just sounds like to me that you need some second step work and third step work at least. Um, um, you're, you're struggling with God and, um, and, and, oh, 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 and your anger, you know, the, the fear, the fear part of the fourth step will, will help you, I believe, with your anger too. So, so the answer for, to me, the answer for you is in the steps, as is everybody. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, John. John, I'd really encourage you to get Jim's phone and get, have a chat with him if you could. It would really help. Um, so we've still got a few minutes to go. Um, if someone wants to ask another question, if we don't get any more questions, um, if it's okay, Jim, we might wrap it up. I'd like to ask a question. Go for it. So I've been in the program for six years. And the, uh, I, um, I, I have two parts, two, two different questions. But the, uh, the first question is, is that the, uh, I've switched sponsors and, and they keep taking me back to step one and working through the big book, specifically reading like chapter and verse, you know, right through the big book until I can uh, start working step four. But uh, that's really slow for me, and I really would like to be getting onto the, the, the upper steps and to working on step four through nine. So um, I'm frustrated on that. Let's leave it at that question. Well, if you were, if I was going to take you as my sponsor, as my sponsee today, I would want you to, I would want to hear some of your first, second, and third step stuff so I could get to know you. Um, sure. So, so maybe it's not maybe it's not all about you. I mean, maybe you need to do. I'm sure you're going to get more from doing it, but maybe you're going to maybe you need to do it for your sponsor's edification. You know, if he's going to be your your sponsor and help you through the steps, maybe he. What better way to get to know you than listen to how you're powerless and listen to your unmanageability? Um, you know, you know, you know about the 36 questions in the Step Into Action book at the end of the first first step. I've, I've been through it. Okay. Well, there's 36 yeah. questions there that really, that really can, can, you know, you, you, you answer those and you can tell them to your sponsor and, and at least that's a good way for him to get to know you. And I think that's invaluable. Okay. All right. The, uh, can I ask the second question? Yeah. So I don't think it's so much of a, of, of a, um, of a sex issue, but the, uh, I think it's more of a, a connection thing. And it's just that I'm lonely and I'm disconnected and I'm going through a nasty divorce and the uh, and my life is is unmanageable without the without the program without with without my problem for different reasons and um, and I and I think that the uh, that my um, that the, I think it's all complicated and that uh, and that. Um, I, I think that I am a sexaholic, but I am not sure that it's in the, in the classic way. And what I'm, what I'm trying to get to is that the, um, can I still be a sexaholic, even though that I'm, it's not really so much about having sex. Yeah. 
I mean, sexaholism, not having sex is just the smallest part to me of recovery. I mean, if, if only, if, if the only, my only problem was sexual acting out, I wouldn't be going to meetings. I wouldn't be here talking to you guys. I mean, you know, I, my problem is living. I mean, and, and, and resentments and fears and selfishness and, and all those character defects I, I have every day. And that's why I go, you know, the only thing about, the only way that I identify my, the only thing that I know about sex is when I say I'm a sexaholic. Other than that, you know, I don't need to talk about sex at a meeting or how not to act out. I mean, that's the primary purpose. Don't get me wrong. Don't ever get me wrong. The primary purpose is to stay sober and help other sexaholics achieve sobriety. But um, it's not my problem today. It's not my primary problem. You know, if, if I don't take care of my character defects and my living problems, though, I know that I'm going to revert back and end up end up relapsing with my sexual acting out. You help me on that. It's answer. a program for living. It's just it's not a program just to not act out. That would be a that's superficial. I wouldn't I wouldn't even like it if it, that's all it was to it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. Any more questions for Jim? Oh, here we go. We've got a question. All right. Hi. First of all, thank you so much. Um, apologizing in advance. My English is not so well, so I'll try to get the answer to the question. Um, I'm this program for almost 15 years, and I lost, um, I lost sobriety of seven years, six years ago. And since then, the last six years, I know that you don't like this word struggling because the opposite of the surrender, but that's my question. I feel that I, I can't get the same surrendering, the same willingness, the same willingness to surrender as I had before. And I had been, when I came to this program, I'm trying for six years to get sober. So the, um, and it's very hard for me to, to get it. I would like to hear from you any, um, how can I, what I'm wrong? I don't know. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I mean, my first, my first three thoughts are my three S's that I talked about earlier. Do you have a sponsor? Are you working steps and are you available to do any service to get out of yourself? Yeah. So basically I have a sponsor. I'm working the steps, uh, but uh, service, it's not how I feel. I feel I'm not able, I'm able to give service, but I feel I'm like I'm a loser that I'm not belong there to give a service. Well, that's a lie you tell yourself. Okay. I mean, you're, you're able to, you're, anybody is able to give service. I mean, to show up and to greet somebody, you know, to smile, to, to go to a meeting, because I believe this. Sometimes I'm the only person at a meeting that can reach another person at the meeting. I mean, God, God arranges that. And sometimes something that I'll say simply that I never even thought about will be the most meaningful thing that another person will hear that night. And if I decide that I'm going to stay home and watch Jeopardy instead of going to a meeting, I have really messed it up. So it's not, and, and this is off on a little tangent too. It's not that I need a meeting but maybe the meeting needs me. Thank you so much. All right, any more questions for Jim? Thanks so much. So it's been great answers to questions, uh, Jim. Yeah, hi, my name is Angelo. I'm a sex worker for Recovering Sexaholic. Thank you everyone for the meeting. Hey, um, yeah, I do have a question, and I, my question is, I feel like at the moment I had, there are layers to my recovery. So the last six months from being so afraid um, when I saw tr something trigger uh, triggering to now where it's, it's different, I wonder how does it change over the years? So maybe I want to compare it to alcohol. So the alcohol, the alcoholic doesn't want to drink anymore. How does it, how's your experience with lust? Do you come to a stage where 
you don't even want to lust anymore. And yeah, what's your experience with that? Thank you. Well, let me take. Let me tell you this. I've got some experience with that. I'm a lustaholic, and uh, and I claim progressive victory over lust, but I still am capable, able, and I do have lustful thoughts, visions. Um, I don't know, maybe even actions. Um, it's just, you know, it's 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 something that I have to work on every day. Um, uh, it, in my in my experience, my ability or my my lusting has not gone. It, I'm, I'm you know I I want to say again I have had progressive victory over it over the years, but I am still capable to to take to to take a second look in the grocery store at somebody's backside, or to you know to do the next wrong thing to look I you know have a thought. Um, uh, yeah. it happens and I just have to bring it into the light. You know, I'm just as sick as my secrets. And, 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 and my solution for that is, is I bring it into the light. I t I'll tell about it at a meeting or I go to a friend or I call my sponsor and, and pray. I have to pray first. I have to pray first. I call my sponsor sometimes with issues and he says, have you prayed about it? And I say, no. And he said, well, call me, let's hang up. You pray and call me back when you prayed about it. And that, I mean, I, and that's, 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 that's for real. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Can I jump in? Yeah, go for it. I think it's really sexolic. Um, I really appreciate the, the workshop. And the question is, so I've been, I gotten, you know, multiple times, four or five times, 30, 30 days, 40 days, but then I, I, you know, I relapsed and the last, usually, usually for me, you know, it's been like, okay, acting out a couple of days, I'm right back at it. I have like the same willingness. I'm ready to work it. The last time around, it really wasn't like that. You know, it was like one or two months that I was just, my mind was playing with me, telling me that like, no, lust is healthy. You know, basically, you know, not believing in the disease model, not believing that I'm different than other people. And um, right now, you know, it's day 11 for me and I'm listening to this workshop of the disease model and I'm all gung-ho and excited about it. But I'm just like, you know, looking, I don't know, like we, when I hit day 30, day 40, it's just going to be like, I have this thing in my head, like, oh, it's too much. And then I just go back out there. So I guess it's, it's a fear of mine, but I don't know if you have any feedback. Um, so do you, first, first thing I'm going to ask you is, do you think that you're a real sexaholic? I mean, is there, yes. is there a lurking notion that you're not a sexaholic? There's a lurking notion, but it's not true. <laughs> That's what a sexaholic is. Every alcoholic wants to drink, wants to like a normal man. One That's day he'll right. be uh, able to drink. Well, you know, maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. I'm an alcoholic and I really don't want to drink. I mean, it's okay with me if I never drink. I've had all I want. And, uh, and I really don't want to ever, ever, ever have sex with myself or have sex outside of my marriage. Um, and I'm, and I, and I continue working on that, but anyway, that's, that's an aside. Um, you know, you're, it just, it just sounds like that you're struggling and, uh, you know, like I said, that's the opposite of surrender, but, um, um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, you, you have to be convinced that you're for real, that you could, that you really got this thing. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right, we still got. Um, oh no, we're nearly finished. Oh, two minutes. So, uh, we'll go quick question from Mustafa. And that is it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I'm Mustafa, I'm a sexaholic. Uh, I'm grateful that I'm here. My question is: Now, I'm grateful that I've been sober for uh, seven months and. 25 days i guess but here i have i always i always have this fear of relapsing every time i uh, encounter a memory like for example uh there was like you know a pattern like i watch youtube like whatever i watch something and then like thought comes and then i feel find myself like uh, watching 
uh, like uh, you know relapsing so the question is now i was watching youtube i was watching like like cartoon like uh, for kids and like thoughts came and like those like you know uh, i was like lying on my couch and that brought like some fantasies will these things stay forever like i feel like i'm like every day i feel like yeah i'm gonna relapse like i don't know like uh, how to deal with that thank you um I, mean, I I don't I don't have any 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 specific answer, but but the pat answers are you know I call somebody I need to it's a we program and I need the fellowship and if I'm having if I'm having lustful thoughts from watch, watching a cartoon because it's it strikes something in my mind you know I uh, first of all I need to I need to try and be aware of not watching whatever whatever it might be but I understand that you can't always avoid every life you know that's life and. Um, but you you better have your sponsor on speed dial, man. You better be able to call somebody and talk really fast as soon as you pray. <laughs> you pray and then you call. And that's, you know, that's my solution. Over and over and over again. Wear them out. Awesome. Thanks, Mustafa. Just see the last messages. Uh, Michael said, I have issues with cartoons. Give him a call. Paul said, thanks very, very, very much. All right, everyone. I've been up since 6 a.m. this morning. It is time for me to get out of this house. Um, thanks a lot, Jimbo. You're a legend. Um, thanks for staying back. And um, yeah, They say the question and answers section is the best part. I, I reckon this last 25, 30 minutes was the best part. For me, thanks so very much, everyone. Don't forget um, to contribute to SA as a whole. We're sixty thousand dollars in the red. SA desperately needs your money, um, and yeah, do do what the old timers do. They've got old, they've got long term recovery because they do what they say. All right, get the sponsor, do the steps, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you want to finish off with anything? Serenity prayer or something, Jimbo? First step prayer. All right. God. God. Myself to thee. To, thee. to build with me. Build with thee. And do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self, itself. That I may better I do, thy, do will. thy will. Take away my difficulties. That victory over them would bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do that with always. Always.